Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm excited to bring you a RPK-12 light machine gun review. Now this is a very interesting machine gun because it has a low rate of fire, good accuracy, it's very similar in appearance to the AK-12, and in fact the recoil pattern is almost identical to the AK-12. The only real difference is that it shoots a little bit slower and has a much larger magazine. So if you're a fan of the AK-12, which frankly you should be, it's a great gun, very fun to use at medium and long range, then the RPK-12 will probably appeal to you. Now here I am using the RPK stock. This is no attachments, no grip, no barrel, no sight, no nothing, just iron sights. I'm working my way up from the ground up and uh, it's a fun gun, an easy gun to use even when it's stock. I will say the iron sights are a little bit tricky to try and um, track moving targets. They're much better for hitting stationary targets at longer range. Tap firing is an effective technique with this LMG, although not quite as effective as some of the ones with lower first shot recoil. This one only has a 1.6 first shot recoil, so you can still tap fire uh, and still maintain a decent accuracy, but if you like to do longer bursts, this machine gun is also very good for that. Now I've certainly talked about some of my favorite LMGs out there, and I didn't mention the RPK-12, so why would you want to use the RPK-12? Well, maybe you're not a fan of LMGs. Maybe you really like the way that assault rifles handle and feel. Well, the RPK-12 really is, for all intents and purposes, an assault rifle with a 60 round magazine. Everything stat-wise, aside from the hip fire accuracy, suggests that it should be shooting just like an assault rifle. It has aiming downside accuracy of 0.2, which is pretty much what most assault rifles have. Its uh, recoil is identical to the AK-12, which has got a very easy to control recoil. Its rate of fire is pretty low at 600 rounds per minute, and uh, it does have the damage model of a machine gun. So you're sort of doing a trade-off between rate of fire between the AK-12 and getting a slightly longer range damage model and slightly more suppression. Now I'll admit, when first looking over the stats of this weapon, I saw that 600 round per minute rate of fire and I pretty much just skipped over it. That's why I'm ranking up this gun from the bottom because I never really tried it very much. And frankly, it's hard to make a gun look attractive when it's only doing 600 rounds per minute with a 25 damage maximum. There's plenty of other guns out there that have 600 round per minute rate of fire, but they also bump up their maximum damage, like the Scar-H for example. But if you notice in this clip here, I'm going to be taking out some parachuters and I'm not going to actually need to reload in between them. This gun is accurate, uh, it's going to maintain decent damage at longer range, and it's got that nice big 60 round magazine. And you're going to see several clips here where I'm able to take out three, four guys without reloading. Now certainly it's not the most honorable thing to be hanging out on top of the hill in Operation Mortar shooting parachuters, but then again, I didn't design this game in the stupid spawn system. This obliteration map probably has the most chaotic spawn in the entire entire game because both teams are spawning while parachuting into the same area and you can shoot each other while parachuting down from your designated spawn locations. It's kind of crazy. And this clip here demonstrates why it's so important to always watch that minimap whenever possible. I noticed that there's three guys coming up on the flank of our team. They snuck all the way around, turn around and because I got that 60 round mag I can kill all three of them without even needing to bother reloading, and uh, we managed to get both MCOM arms. No idea how much damage three guys sneaking out behind on our, our entire team would have done. Maybe our guys would have turned around and saw them coming, but still, that mini-map is just really where it's at, prevents so many flanking opportunities. Now admittedly, Locker is probably not the most ideal location for this machine gun. You'd be much better off with an MG4 or an M249 or just about any other LMG with a higher rate of fire better damage output. But that being said, there are a lot of long alleyways and areas where you can still make good use of this. Now this big outdoor island here, again back on Operation Mortar, is going to be a much better location to get those long range kills. Although I am sneaking around the huts here, I have the opportunity to take out people from more of a distance. Although I'm being just a little bit more sneaky and getting the better of my opponents where they're not even returning fire. But at long range, you start doing a little bit of burst firing, a little bit of tap firing, you got no problem taking down your targets. Now on maps like Operation Mortar with such limited cover, I try and stick close to the buildings whenever possible. Being in and around actual solid cover is going to keep you alive a lot longer. Grenades are so prevalent in this game and having something solid to dive behind when they come flying your way is really important. And uh, I managed to get a good flank up here and you're going to watch a really funny clip where I think it's a good idea to take cover in a swimming pool here. Now I know that there's a whole squad of guys moving out there. I managed to take out two in a spray as they come across right there and then I realize that I'm spotted on the minimap. Always assume you're spotted on the minimap and the enemies are coming towards you. 
So this guy comes my way and I manage to get him with an impact grenade and then I know that there's multiple guys. I see him on the minimap there just coming my way, I'm waiting for my health to recharge and have one more and then the last guy gets me. You don't want to run into a swimming pool like that, you want to run into an area where you have an, uh, an opportunity to run away from the combat, tactically retreat if you need to, and then uh, come at them from a different angle. But uh, I pretty much back myself into a corner and manage to still sneak out four kills. Now that I am stuck on some lockers gameplay here, I'm definitely not going to play in the front lines quite as much. I'll definitely be right up there, but usually not the first guy through a door just because I'm not the person that I want to see somebody at close quarters. So I figure out where the fire's coming from, support my teammates, and take out targets from long range, always remembering to drop an ammo box. I never run the support class without an ammo box. It almost seems pointless to me. And uh, if you can keep dropping ammo, keep resupp resupplying your grenades, that is really one of the support class's best benefits is having essentially an unlimited grenade supply and an unlimited supply of ammo. Machine guns are great for actually suppressing your enemies and taking a lot of shots that you think you might be able to hit. If your accuracy isn't lower with the support class, then you are playing it incorrectly. Take a lot of shots that you don't think you can make. Put a huge volume of fire down range. Uh, get a few hits on some guys here. Get a lot of assist kills. Get a lot of suppression assists and then resupply your ammo. Now, obviously, getting a kill is worth a lot of points, 100 points to be specific. But if you get a good kill assist and then a suppression assist and then you got an ammo box out there giving people points and stuff like that, you're going to be getting a lot of points. So if you are actually interested in ranking up and doing well, the support class is great for getting XP and hitting the top of the scoreboard. And as I mentioned earlier, the RPK-12 really isn't at its best in lockers, but you can certainly play it. Just remember to take advantage of things like pre-firing a lot. That means shooting as you're coming around the corner uh, before you can see your target, because you have plenty of bullets to play around with. 60 rounds in a magazine is no laughing matter. It's twice as much as an assault rifle. You have a low rate of fire, so you're going to be shooting for a long time before that mag runs dry. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of your endless ammo supply and just shoot a lot. And now that I'm running my Cobra sight and I put a stubby grip on there the way that I prefer to run this gun, I was doing excellent, getting very good tight groupings of fire and managing to top the score scoreboard no problem. So if you have the opportunity, try out the RPK-12. It would be great for medium and longer range maps. Something like the Forest and Zavod 311 would be an excellent area to test out this gun. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.